Desmond in Singapore, and I think we have communicated before. If so, hi, Desmond. Thanks for writing in, man. He says, hey, Paul, I've always loved the sound of Class A amps. There's just something about the way they handle that low-level detail and tonal richness that I can't seem to get enough of. But here's my situation. I live in Singapore. It's hot. It's humid. And even though I've got air conditioning, that Class A amp runs hot all day. So I'm wondering, am I doing any long-term damage by running it so often in this climate? Are there things I should be doing to protect it, or should I be thinking about switching to something else a little more forgiving in a tropical environment? <laughs> well, <laughs> Desmond, I think, you're, I think you're all right. The problem with heat and amplifiers almost always crops up in the power supply. Those big electrolytics that are inside of your power supply, they don't like that heat very much. They're chemical based. Electrolytics have all sorts of chemical compositions inside and when you boil them, when you heat them over long periods of time, it shortens their life, it changes their value, and they will go down. So we're an average, say amplifiers that we build will last 20, 30 years without a problem. A class A amp that gets really hot and in those conditions, you're looking at shaving off two thirds of its life, possibly, but A, you can always have the capacitors replaced. B, if it's in air conditioning, I am struggling to figure out why this seems a problem. Now, I know it's humid, but humidity isn't going to bother this at all, unless you get fungus growing. I mean, <laughs> I remember when I first went to Thailand, which is very humid, I'm walking outside and thinking, whoa, this, this place is like crazy humid. It almost feels like it's going to rain. And I'm looking up on the sides of the buildings and there's like green stuff growing all over it. And that's kind of common out in that area. So things love, uh, love, love to live in all of that. And I think um, that, may <laughs> that, that may contribute to some bad stuff. But you got that, whether it's a class AB amplifier, whether it's class A. So heat wise, that's what I would worry about are those capacitors, the rest of it, not so sure I would worry about. Okay, um, what can you do about it? Well, remember, class A is really great, as you point out, on low level detail. The amps we make pay a lot of attention to that fact because we run very high class A bias in the lower ends of the signal. Once it gets out of that, we go to class B uh, a, B, what, and that's why it's called class A, B. It's class A up to a certain point, then you go to class B, and then when it comes back down, you're in the middle, back into class A, and that's where it really counts, in that those low, low uh, level signals, the, the, the stuff that you like so much. I have never been a fan of class A when it gets loud, when you're trying to drive big orchestral pieces. Uh, I just think they are kind of wimpy on the dynamics. And I prefer a high bias class AB amplifier because there you get the best of both worlds. So you might look into that, at least give it a, a try. All right? All right, Desmond, thanks for the question. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Bye.